Uh, there it goes. Hey everyone, I wanted to show you how gold bonds with mercury. It will make an amalgam. I want to show you how the gold and mercury bond together. They make an alloy. I'll take the sheets out and I'll mix it with the mercury and you'll see how it almost looks like it is dissolving, but in fact it's making a metal alloy or an amalgamation with the mercury. Okay, let's jump right to it. So we all should know the properties of mercury by now. If not, you can check my last video. But uh, just quickly go over, it uh, is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. It has a melting point of minus 38.9 Celsius and it boils at 356.7 degrees Celsius. So the gold leaf I have just comes in these little sheets. You can see that they're very flimsy. I'm told that they're 0 0.01 grams a piece. So we'll put that in and mix it with the mercury and see what happens here. So I've just placed the tiniest bead of mercury into my little boat here. And I'll just put this gold leaf right on top and you'll see the action here. The gold leaf really likes to stick to things. There it goes. So it's making an alloy with the mercury right there. So if you're wondering what's going on here in the most basic of processes, the gold is dissolving in using a process called metallic bonding, which is basically just dissolving in and it's recrystallizing with the mercury into a better lattice or a better matrix. So mercury actually has the ability to dissolve in many metals, gold and silver being the best. Iron is pretty resistant to it, so, which is why in the old days you would see mercury being stored in iron flasks. It's also resistant to zinc and platinum, I believe. We're going to put a little drop of mercury on here. Okay, I got some uh, North Saskatchewan flower gold here. Let's see how it does on that. I'll just do a little bit. So it sits on top, but I'm sure once you stir it around a little bit, it will start to dissolve it. And as it dissolves more, it gets almost thicker, behaving more like a solid. Yeah, there's just a little bit floating on top, but for the most part, it's all gone with the exception of the uh, impurities that will not get dissolved. Okay, I found this works out a lot better if you just put the gold into a little vial and then put the bead in there and then shake it around, agitate it. It seems to dissolve it a lot quicker, so let's do that. Just throw the lid on. Get 
give it a shake. You can see it's starting to dissolve it. It's all attaching itself. Okay, you can see in here now that it's become rather rigid. It's not beady like it used to be in silvery. You can see the remnants of the black sand, probably some magnetite left over from the cleanup. And it's kind of a, well, it's an amalgamated piece of mercury and gold. Okay, let's just toss this into the pan here. Being careful. Okay, so I'm going to take that little piece of amalgam that did the last sheet and I'm just going to put it on this one. Oh yeah, yeah. Sucking it all in. Okay, so in the end, this is what we end up with. A fairly solid piece of mercury gold amalgam. And you can see here that it, it's kind of spongy-like. There's still a little bit of free mercury in there, which you can get out if you squish it through cheesecloth or a really fine filter. But essentially that's what you want here. Let's see if it'll still dissolve. So what the old timers would do at this point is they would uh, put this into some type of container and throw it into a hot fire and retort the mercury out. And since mercury boils away or vaporizes at a much lower temperature than gold, if you get higher than that temperature, the mercury will vaporize away into a gas and you'll be left with just gold. Which you don't really want to do because the vapors are very toxic and deemed not healthy for you to breathe in. So do not do that at all. There's also a chemical way to extract the gold. You take this amalgam and you drop it into concentrated nitric acid and the mercury will dissolve into solution leaving the gold behind. Once again you are presented with very toxic gassing. So if you're going to do that, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area, a fume hood. Uh, I just generally wouldn't recommend you do that at all. So be very careful when you're handling this stuff and know what the limits are and what you can and cannot do safely. Yeah, so that's the video on mercury gold amalgam. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you want me to do with this. I could 
try to do a, a retort that's uh, safe and uh, extract the gold back or recover the gold back and see what we get. If you guys liked it, please um, leave a like and co make a comment. If you have any questions on this stuff, let me know. Hit that subscribe button right there and make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I really appreciate your guys' time and views on this. All right, so what I have here is some lead. I hear mercury will dissolve lead just as good, so here's what you get in a pellet gun. Let's put a couple in and see what happens. So just in case it's got an oxidation layer, I'm just gonna scuff it up a bit with the file. You can tell it's oxidized because it's nice and shiny once you scuff it up. And we'll toss it in a little bead of mercury. This one I'll do in the vial. And there it is in the mercury. We'll let that sit for a bit. There's two in there actually. We'll shake it around a bit. And we'll check on it in a bit. Okay, so after a few days, this is what the lead amalgam looks like. Still having some work to go, but uh, I guess maybe that's as good as it's gonna get. All right, talk to you guys later.